Hello, thanks for joining me. I'm the Badger Reborn, and today I'm going to talk about recent comments made by Rafe Judkins about the upcoming Wheel of Time TV show made by Amazon, and what those comments mean. Rafe did a recent Q&A on Instagram, and he was also a surprise guest at a JordanCon panel. If you haven't checked that out, it's definitely something you should watch after this. I'll go through the most interesting answers and break them down. This video contains no spoilers for the series, so if you haven't finished the books or you're a new reader, you're definitely welcome to join in on this video. But then, after you finish it, go read the series, it's great! The Instagram Q&A was very fast-paced, with a lot of questions being asked. I've removed some of the less interesting ones, but still have most. I'll read the question, Rafe's answer, and then give my take on it. First off, which part of the books should you be caught up on for the first season? Rafe said, it depends on if you like to read something before you watch it or not. This is obviously cryptic, and doesn't really tell how much of the books are going to be covered in the first season. Rafe's quite good at giving that kind of answer. Just something to know as we keep going. What do you find most challenging about going from the book to the screen? Rafe said, The hardest thing is the physicality of production. In the first book alone, they go to more than 20 villages and cities. To try to do that is physically impossible for the show. So most of the work we do in the room is geographical, figuring out how to condense the story and move it through places we can physically create. This is a great thing for all of us as fans to remember. We know there will be changes to the show, and Rafe is letting us know a big one here. The writer's room, that's the room he was talking about, has to figure out how to condense the story due to the limitations of sets and budget. Does this mean that major locations will be cut? Probably not, but the small, quick ones certainly could be. Do you have a favorite chapter from the whole saga? And then the questioner mentioned Veins of Gold as one of their favorites. Rafe said, so many, but Honey and the Tea is one off the top of my head. I personally won't go into spoilers about these chapters, but they're amazing and give some insight into the types of moments that Rafe loves, as well as characters and interactions he enjoys. What intrigues me is that the Honey and the Tea chapter isn't particularly noteworthy in terms of plot, but it was a chapter that Robert Jordan apparently considered one of his best written. Rafe clearly knows this and respects Jordan's writing. Should Amazon do a better job of engaging fans' love of theory and speculation? Please embrace us. Rafe said, I love theory and speculation. What can they do to better engage you? Send suggestions and I'll forward them along. I'd say that Rafe is already doing a fantastic job of engaging with fans, and I'll get to more of that later. Just think, what other showrunner do you know? What other showrunner is interacting with fans on Instagram, answering their questions, and that kind of thing? I don't really know of any. In fact, I'm not sure if I've ever even heard of a showrunner before. Will there be a soundtrack? And who's the composer? Rafe said, of course, David Buckley. Plus, some incredible music guests that we've already had. I'm speculating that the singer and audio recorder Uriel is one of these musical guests. She has a lot of fantasy in her repertoire and recently stated that she's involved with a big fantasy Amazon show. Could this be the Wheel of Time? What was the first moment you were speechless on set? Rafe said, the first time walking into Eamon's field with my mom. And I love this. That's so sweet. Is Matt fluent in the old tongue yet? We've had a couple of cast members speak it already, and they nailed it. From my perspective, we know that the show has a linguistic expert who's working with the actors and helping them with the old tongue. And given that we know that two main characters speak the old tongue early in Eye of the World, I think we can guess which cast members have already spoken it. I'm really looking forward to this, especially for the one character who speaks it a few more times. Which character has your favorite costumes so far? Rafe said, this is tough, probably Jeff from Bornhold. This is further confirmation that the White Cloaks aren't being cut. If you needed further confirmation than the video of a wolf attacking a White Cloak. I'm also looking forward to this costume. The White Cloaks are so unique and iconic. Who is your favorite Forsaken? Rafe said, ah, I love the ladies. Grandal, Lanfear, Mogadian. Anna Shamael holds a special place in my heart the more time I spend with him. Keeping this spoiler free, I think a lot of fans would agree with these selections. I had all three women in my top 10 villains list, and I'm interested in Rafe saying that Ashamael is becoming more special to him. Yes or no, have you made any cuts to a scene or character that has been painful for you? Rafe said yes. That's it. The show's gonna suck. We're doomed. How are you planning to handle the visualization of the weaves? Any little tidbits? Rafe said we're trying to stay as true to the books as possible. I've been giving a bunch of VFX folks long diatribes about channeling, weaves, threads, earth versus air, etc. And the early stuff has started coming in. It looks awesome. How exciting is this? It's great to know that the channeling is already being worked on, and that Rafe has a lot of control over how it looks. He said before that he liked aspects of the magic visuals in Doctor Strange, the movie, and I think that's a great idea for how magic will look at the beginning of a complex weave. Blink twice if Min's in season one. Rafe did two winking emojis. I think this could mean a few things. First, it could mean, I'm not going to tell you. Second, it could mean, she's in the show, but not season one. Third, it could mean, yes, she is, but there's no blinking emoji. Can we expect a trailer for the show anytime soon? Rafe said, probably not for a long while, sadly. This is sad, but not surprising to me. 
They aren't going to want to start the hype too soon. The fanbase will continue carrying the hype until we see a trailer, at which point it will spread to people who have not read the books. With, Am with the Amazon show The Boys, the earliest teaser I can find is October 2018, and the show debuted in July 2019, so that's a long way before the show. If Amazon follows a similar schedule with Wheel of Time though, maybe that trailer will actually be coming in a few months? Can you do a big Watt Wednesday announcement during the hiatus to keep us fans hyped? Rafe said, yeah, it would cheer all of us up and we have some fun news. Another exciting vague thing. I love vague. Will we have to wait until season two to see any Aiel? Rafe said, nope, and the one you see will shock you. This is the biggest reveal of the Instagram questions to me. Having an Aiel in season one isn't entirely unexpected, but the fact that the Aiel will be shocking adds a lot of layers. I think there are several options for big reveals that would be surprising and fit with the story of season one. Who do you think it is? Let me know in the comment section. Robert Jordan writes a lot of internal headspace stuff. What's one hint on how the show will handle that? Rafe said, that's the biggest difficulty of any novel adaptation, figuring out how to make the internal monologue come out clearly to the audience. A lot of changes we make and stories we tell differently are designed to serve exactly that purpose, showing you what those characters' internal monologues from the book are without them just saying it out loud in exposition. For those of you who are worried about how Rafe is going to bring that aspect of story to life, I'm one of you, and it's nice to know that he is aware of how important the internal monologues are in Wheel of Time. Not that I didn't think he was before, but confirmation is always good. Are you using taller actors to portray the Aiel, or camera trickery? We're trying to get tall folks, but I'm less concerned with height and more concerned with acting ability. I hope those of you who think the skin color of an actor will ruin the entire Wheel of Time setting are equally unhappy with this answer, for consistency's sake. What would you say the CGI to practical ratio is going to be? We're trying to do as much in camera as we possibly can. This is always good news. Practical just has that ability to look so good. I feel like the Lord of the Rings movies are always the example of this, and for good reason. I think Wheel of Time has the ability to reach that level too. How are you handling sword forms and their names? Rafe said, we have a real sword master on the show who walks into every room and tests out everything as a weapon. This is great news as well. The show has a linguist and a sword master who work with the actors on set. This should add some realism to fights. And those things just, they're further proof that Amazon is really putting in the effort to make this an extremely high quality production. They're not skimping. How are the horses on set? Is Mandarb spectacular? Rafe said, they are so great. Honestly, I love our horses. Mandarb and Aldeeb are downright sexy. No mention of Bella. Do you think Bella's getting cut? When will we get more casting announcements to hold us over? Rafe said, I'll try to get them to put out something soon. A lot of folks in all the departments are affected by the state of the world right now, so I can't promise a timeline. This sounds like there are more big casting announcements that could be made. Maybe the Camelon folks? Maybe the Barillon folks? Will we see the prologue from the Eye of the World on screen in Season 1? Rafe said, you will hear that phrase. This has been the most cryptic answer to me. I've been reading into this answer with all the inflections and thinking through nuances, but I'm really not sure what it could mean. What do you think it means? Are we going to get a voiceover for the season that says, the prologue to the eye of the world involves two men having a conversation, then stuff happens, etc. over a black screen? To what extent has Harriet McDougall been involved with the project? Rafe said, she's a consulting producer, so she's been out to Prague to the sets and reads all the scripts and sends me her notes on them. She and Maria are hugely helpful for maintaining the truth of the series and always keep me honest when it comes to things that change too much. Also, another question, how involved, if at all, is Brandon Sanderson in the writer's room? Rafe said, Brandon is hugely helpful. I talked to him before we started season two while he was in Prague to get advice, and he reads all the scripts and gives notes. Rafe feels so lucky to have him involved and would like for him to do even more if that was possible. This is really exciting too. If you don't know, Harriet was Robert Jordan's wife and also the editor of The Wheel of Time. Maria was his primary assistant, and Brandon, of course, finished writing the last Wheel of Time books after Robert Jordan passed away. Having them all this heavily involved means that Rafe has great respect for the source material and is trying to involve the team as much as possible. Robert Jordan created thousands of characters. Given that, did you feel the need to create new characters? Anyone new is inspired by characters in the books or a number of characters combined. If we paid to cast all the speaking roles in the books, we couldn't afford to have anything but a radio play, basically. Anyone new is inspired by characters in the books. This is major. It's also the strategy that the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the MCU, uses to create their movie characters, in my opinion. So that's great news, too. Rafe is our Kevin Feige. A minor character being folded into a more major one is just good book adapting, and means that while some characters will be cut, their stories and their impact on the plot will live on, and the major characters will become even stronger and fuller. What words of hope would you offer a fan afraid that the show will cut out a lot of content? And I know that's some of you out there. Rafe said, I genuinely think we are cutting less than most people think. When I see people ask questions like, are you cutting men? It blows my mind. I don't know how you do an adaptation without some of these characters. I think it'll be more of the smaller stories you'll miss. 
we can't have Rand and Matt travel too many to too many inns on their travels across the countryside, for instance. It's just not producible. So that will be more of what you'll miss, and the books will always exist for that. This should come as no surprise, but it should be a comfort to those of you who are still worried. They are not cutting major plots. They are not cutting major characters. They might be cutting some side stories, the C or D plots, or shrinking repetitive A and B plots. While I really love things like Rand and Matt traveling to inns, Rafe is right. I will always have the books for that. Finally, Will the show be understandable for those who didn't read the books? Rafe said, that's the idea. If there are little things they don't get though, luckily Google exists. Stop right there, Rafe. Stop. Here's a message for new readers. Do not Google the Wheel of Time. You will be spoiled. Instead, join my Discord and ask questions in the non-spoiler section. The Wheel of Time community is amazing and so spoiler conscious, in addition to being helpful and friendly for new readers. And I'm looking forward to seeing that carried forward to new viewers of the show. That's it for the Instagram Q&A, which like I said, was a big one. Now we're going to move on to the JordanCon panel, which Rafe surprised everyone by joining in on. There aren't as many questions, and I'm going to focus on just a few main highlights. First up, Rafe confirms that they are finished filming six episodes. Based on information that has already come out, it seems the show is filming in a very structured episode-by-episode -episode format, which is somewhat unusual for a TV show. He also seemed to confirm that the series will not premiere in 2020. I already thought before this shutdown that a 2020 premiere was unlikely, so this doesn't change my perspective much. A great quote from Rafe was, my job is to protect the spine and the heart of the books. He went on to say that a huge actor representing a character for one scene, but then not being on the show for a long time is not a good situation. It would likely lead to recasting, which often means an actor represents the character less well than the first actor. As a result, I think we'll see some characters cut from early on but appear later, if they have only minor roles early in the books. Some examples of these characters would be Gareth Brynn and Dane Bornhold. Rafe mentioned that he likes to have all the scripts written for a season, before starting any prep for that season. He then said that the writers are currently working on the scripts for season two, will be able to have them finished before doing any prep, and specifically said eight scripts. I think it's clear from Rafe's comments that there will be eight season two episodes. While a lot of people see this as the big news, I actually think the big news is a different part of what he said. I see this as near confirmation that Rafe said that season two has been given the green light already. If they're willing to write all eight scripts and they're thinking about prep, I think it's a near surefire thing that we're going to get season two, which is awesome. Additionally, I think that one thing that some people missed was that Sarah Nakamura, the book expert for the show, was typing in the video chat. She indicated that Rafe has a lot of say over whether Amazon releases the show weekly or in a season dump, but she doesn't know what his preference is. I really want a weekly release. I think that fits so much better with the ability to hype up a show, get excited about each episode, digest it with the fan community for a whole week before getting the next one, and just getting that buildup of excitement as the season goes along, building up to the finale. Informal Twitter and Discord polls done by me and others show that 65-85% to 85 of the Watt fandom does too, so let's make sure that Rafe sees that. Another huge statement from Rafe was his reasoning for wanting to be the creator of the Wheel of Time TV show for Amazon. Rafe said, and I quote, I can't let anyone else do this because they might F it up. If someone screws this up, I will never forgive myself. I have the capabilities to do this, so I have to. You feel an intense desire to do right by this thing that you love and by the other people who love it. This is just so incredibly reassuring, as if any more reassurance was needed that Rafe loves the Wheel of Time and is going to make it the right way. One final exciting tidbit is that there is definitely a lot of behind the scenes recording going on, which has been mentioned by both Rafe and Sarah. I'm hoping for a Lord of the Rings extended edition type of behind the scenes, or at least close, and it sounds like we'll be getting at least a good bit of that. All in all, I'm not sure how you can listen to Rafe talk about the show and his passion for the books and not be excited. He's clearly aiming to do the books justice. He loves how intense the fans are, and he can't wait to deliver an amazing show. If you enjoyed this video and would like to continue supporting my channel as it grows, I'd love it if you would consider joining my Patreon page. If becoming a patron isn't for you, I'd love it if you would share this video with people who might enjoy it and want to learn more about the Wheel of Time TV show production. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching. Stay safe during this time, and I'll see you all later.